Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I wanted to share a quick update about stencil storage. I have shared in the past how I store my stencils in these Clarity stencil binders and for a long time I felt like that was a solution that was working for me but I realized recently as I've tried to sort of declutter, simplify my craft space to make it more usable and more streamlined that these weren't really working for me. I wound up having five separate Clarity stencil binders and I wound up having to have two different sizes to comfortably accommodate all of my different stencils. I also didn't like that they were sort of in a fixed order because uh, the page protectors are bound into these, these binders. So I had heard from many people over the years that they used a, like a scrapbook essentially, an eight by eight or a six by six scrapbook. And the six by six seemed like it might be a little bit tight and I knew it would not fit all of my stencils because these seven by sevens did not. I sometimes had taller stencils, so I didn't think it was gonna work for me. And then eight by eight would have fit everything, but I don't, an 8x8 was kind of bulky for what it needed to be. Recently, scrapbook.com has the 6x8 size, and I've heard a couple people use it, and I finally took the plunge. I knew it was going to be a little bit of an expense, but I thought if it would help me to, re to use my stencils more, it would be worth it. And if it helped me to feel less cluttered mentally. Because that's the thing. Like I wound up in this process de-stashing about a third of my stencils. Like all of these are going to go and it doesn't take up that much space. Like this is not going to be a whole bunch of new space in my craft room. And even these five binders that I'm getting rid of wind up being about as thick as my new binder. So I can totally see why some people would be like, Ugh, what, what was the point of that expense, that time you put into it? But to me, it's not just the physical space. It's the mental space. When I have supplies that I don't use, when I come into my craft room, I feel guilty about them. Like I feel like I should be using them and I don't want that. I want crafting to be fun and anytime I feel like a supply is just not inspiring to me, I'd rather sell it to someone who does find it inspiring through like some sort of de-stash group or just pass it on. I have a art and craft supply reuse store in, um, in my general area and so that's one way I can pass them on or um, to, you know to friends and things like that so anyway I just wanted to share a quick look at the stencil system and what I find works for me in case some of these ideas are a little bit different than other people you know who have this same stencil storage. I chose only four really broad categories because here was my dilemma I wanted just one binder and I ordered a 30 pack of page protectors that would be two stencils on each side, 60 stencils. I felt like 60 stencils was way more than enough for me even though I have about, I think in the end I wound up keeping like 56 stencils. Um, it still seems like a lot for someone who doesn't use stencils a whole bit, a whole bunch. I actually use more over on my Instagram, like those cards I share. They don't tend to make it into my YouTube videos as much, but I do have some stencil videos and I'll, I'll leave you a link to that in the video description just in case, you know, if you like stencils, if you're here to hear about your stencil storage, maybe you would find some of those inspirational. But um, I wanted it all to fit in one binder and every time you add a divider, it adds bulk. And there were some decisions I had to make about what was or wasn't worth it bulk-wise. I put these black cardstock sheets behind most of my stencils and the ones that I didn't I probably still will but that adds bulk too it makes it thicker however it really inspires me to use my stencils more because I can envision what they look like on the page when you have the stencil this sort of white stencily material on top of a white background for me I just I don't see it as well I can't uh, I'm not as inspired to use it so that's a personal choice but if you wanted yours to be less bulky, you could skip that. You could also take away, like if you don't need to know who made the stencil. And sometimes the stencils are printed on there. Sorry, sometimes the manufacturers are printed on there. Also, something I've done in the past is to label them with a Sharpie. 
it will come off over time, but you could always rewrite it. So if you want to know what the name of or the company of a stencil is, but it's not imprinted on the stencil, that's another option as well. So um, some manufacturers also do already come with a sort of darker background. So like Newton's Nook and MFT do it. Uh, Memory Box prints theirs. And so that also can be quite helpful. I like the 6x8 size because it's not quite as bulky as an 8x8. I really, really like having a binder. A post-bound album would not work for me. I really like the binder system. Um, and this works well for the 6x6s and the Tim Holtz. Now I realize some people like bigger stencils because they like to do 5x7 cards. I'm more of an A2 gal myself generally, although you can see on my channel I do other things. A lot of slimline stencils might work in this system too, depending on how big they are. Because this is 6x8, but it's actually a little bit bigger than that on each side, so they might poke out just a bit. Something to consider. But I'm at the point where I think, even though I love stencils, and they're so inexpensive compared to a lot of supplies, I'm at the point where I need to stop buying and start using. And that's kind of the other thing with like, you know, I can use my 6x6 pattern paper and you can use it up, but your, your stencils don't get used up. So um, that's why I'm always a big advocate for like having a constant sort of pile of things to pass on uh, once it becomes something that it no longer inspires me. So here you can see what it looks like without the black background. And I don't know about you, but I find that really difficult to parse. Like what, I know it's stars, but you're going to be only left with, like you're going to have a lot of color actually. And when you put that black backer sheet, it becomes obvious that you're going to be left with a lot of ink and only some small bits that are left in the sort of white or background color. And so I find that helpful. I like to keep mine labeled just because if I do use them in a video, I can tell you which ones they are, although that's not always that big of a deal. And yeah, so that's about it for my stencil storage update. I just kind of wanted to share with you what I found helpful about this system because I think sometimes it's nice to hear different people's opinions and different reasons why someone likes a storage system so that you can better tell if you think it would also work for you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will leave you links to the products that I mentioned in the video description below, as well as to some of uh, some stencil videos and some other organization videos in case you're interested in that. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more stencil or other cards that I don't share on YouTube, uh, there's an Instagram link in the video description as well. Have an awesome day. Bye.